So what my presentation will be about is how to enhance discovery in GeoPortals by utilizing recommender systems. First of all, I would like to give an... Doesn't work really to switch the slides? Oh, you turned it off. <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> okay, first of all, I would like to give a short overview of what I'm going to present within the next few minutes. So I will start with uh, an introduction about information discovery. So information discovery within the spatial data infrastructures, but also an outlook of how information is discovered in the World Wide Web, for example, by search engines like Google or Lycos or something like that. Then I will present our overall approach on how to integrate the recommendations in order to enhance the GU web discovery. And finally, I will show the actual implementation and the last section will be dedicated to the outlook and discussion. So, as you know, GU portals have, have evolved over the last few years as main gateways to find, evaluate, and even to start using geographic information. So I put there a print screen from the Energeo Geo portal, maybe a few words about that. So Energeo is an EU FP7 project we're currently working at and our task in that project is to build a geo portal which is uh, highly customized to the needs of the energy domain and it is also fully compliant to Inspire. So this is one part of the project. Then the other part which I'm going to present in the next few slides is that of how to enhance the discovery because discovery can be quite a challenging task. For example, if you think when you last lost anything in your room, for example, you couldn't find your key, this is, can really be a time-consuming task. So getting the relevant information out of something really can be challenging. So within current GeoPortal implementations, discovery is usually restricted to querying title, abstract, and keywords, and in addition, maybe also applying some spatial or temporal filters. So what uh, this advantage about this is, is that user context, uh, for example, the domain or stuff like that, or the search interactions of other users are not incorporated in current searches. So what we find mainly throughout literature are uh, efforts overcoming uh, semantic heterogeneity problems uh, which can be dealt with, with, for example, Thesauri, like DGMAT, uh, but still user context is not incorporated. And this is our approach uh, to integrate such recommendations in order to incorporate the user context. So what we did first was to have a look at what the World Wide Web uh, provides. So a short overview, uh, an historic overview. So within the 1990s, so if I look around here, maybe not all of you can remember that time where Lycos looked like that, but it uh, simply is, was some kind of collection of bookmarks. So it, it really resembled me of how geoportals nowadays are. So they are, they are human maintained, they are of very high quality because there is an editorial board, like for example you have for scientific publications. So the quality of, this, of these catalogs in the 1990s really was good, but there was one major problem with it. So the web grew and therefore the uh, maintenance of it was too uh, difficult over the time. So therefore, within uh, the end of the 1990s, popular search 
engines came into being. Like for example, print screen here of Google, what it looked like in 1998, uh, which it really was the first popular search engine. And its main concepts have not quite changed up to now. So it still uses the page rank system. And what arose about in the year 2000 was that uh, concept of recommender systems. For example, you can find that within online stores, like I put there a print screen of Amazon. So what is our approach then? So what we really want to do is uh, to improve discovery in current geoportal solutions by applying well-established discovery methods from the World Wide Web. And what we did in the first step was to integrate some auto-suggestion lists. For example, uh, as you start typing within Google, you may have recognized and when you start typing something like enter, then you get recomm uh, recommendations and suggestions. For example, would you like to search for energy or energy management? And this was the first part we integrated. And another thing is the concept of tech clouds. So tech clouds uh, are representations of mostly used search tags. And so these were the first steps we tried to introduce in our Geo portal. And finally, we thought, OK, now it's time for even a bigger improvement, and that is that of the recommender systems. So as I mentioned the term, quite a few times already. So what is a recommender system then? Uh, for example, here within Amazon, we have a user performing some kind of search. For example, here, the user searched for a book about geographic information system and science. And then you have two additional sections, which are frequently bought together, and customers who bought this item also bought. So what the recommender system there does that it assumes that if you're interested in the book of geographic information system and science, you might also be interested in the book getting to know uh, ArcGIS desktop. And what really was astonishing for me is the figure here because it is estimated that cross-selling accounts for 35% of Amazon's revenue, which I think is really a big uh, sum. So uh, you may think, OK, a user searched for something, and then he gets presented one uh, list of results. And if he looks at one result closer, then he gets also a list of, OK, you might also be interested in. And lots of people uh, bought items from this recommendation list. So this really must be something that is discovered from the data that is not inherent in the data itself. So what is, are the major improvements by uh, introducing recommenders? The first of all, we want to satisfy the user. So there is an improved browsing through the resources and also a higher customer satisfaction. And also, I mean, this is mainly for online stores, we have more sales. But I also like the term within spatial data infrastructure and geo portals because we also sell something. But we do not sell a product like a DVD or a CD, but we sell content. We sell information, which is really valuable in our world. So what you can do with the recommendations is first of all integrate the rankings. So you can put lists there with a top 10 of most viewed items. Then you have the together functions I already presented. And finally, which is uh, quite useful, is the personalist recommendations. So this is simply the same as if you're asking a friend, OK, your best friend may know what you like, uh, uh, for example, if you think of books, you prefer a certain genre, and this is really the same as asking a friend for a recommendation. 
So this is the automatic pendant to it. And what we did is to bring the world of GeoPortals and the world of these recommendation systems used in online stores together. And what the system does is it tracks user interactions uh, with the search results and within the resources. So if you have some kind of view, buy, or rate action within, recommend within recommender engines, this can be also found within GeoPortals, but we transferred it a little bit. So we have a user performing some kind of search, and while performing the search, he interacts with the search results. And while interacting with the search results, he may have some uh, view of the short description, or he can preview the entire metadata document, or even resources can be rated. And these actions are simply like that. So view action is okay, the product is just viewed. Then we have rating, so within, for example, a thumbs up, thumbs down, or a star rating. And then finally, we have the buy action. So this is actually the most important one. This is when, in our analogy, uh, within GeoPortals, the user really had a quite detailed look at the overall document or uh, if he previewed a service. Okay, finally some technical stuff. So the current implementation took place by using EasyRec. EasyRec is an open source software which we included into the GeoPortal server solution we customized before. The EasyRec software consists of two major components. One is shown in this slide, which is the servlet, which shows statistics on what users clicked. And the other one is that of the API that makes it possible to introduce, uh, to integrate it in any website or in any uh, GU portal solution. So the EasyRec recommender engine uses the association rule miner, uh, which is some kind of shopping cart analyzer. And it is based on the a priori algorithm of R and on slope one. And these are really some complicated algorithms that do all the work in the background so the end user is not presented the part I presented on the previous slide. So it really uh, is something to focus on, make it easy for the end user and not to complicate it. But on the other hand, on the server side, work can be complicated as well. So uh, the a priori algorithm is some kind of classic algorithm for uh, association rules for the learning of it. And it enables the formulation of uh, statements like users loading their cart with an item A and an item B also put the item C in it with a likelihood of something like 90%. And then we have the slope one and this is used to predict how a user would rate an item based on the ratings of a group of users. So as I already mentioned before shortly is that the association rule miner is looking for pairs of items that appear significantly often together in different baskets. And what is shown at the bottom of the slide is all the parameters that can be adjusted in order to improve the recommendations for the end user. And this is finally the implementation which shows, okay, we have the results section at the right side of the slide, and if the user clicks on it, he gets presented results at the bottom of the page, which are the so-called recommendations. Okay, finally, for outlook and discussion. So what we did 
is that we established some additional links between the resources based on the experiences of other users and ideas to further uh, extend recommender based discovery are first of all uh, to integrate primary search language or domain and the other thing is to integrate semantic text analysis or in other words what we like to do here is to integrate some kind of plagiarism software for example you have data sets from various resources and you match the the contents or the context within these texts with e each other and you get percentage values uh, from 0% to 100% which are exact matchings and that can be integrated into the recommendation system as additional uh, rule sets. So that's it so far but uh, always remember so stay tuned there is more to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bernhard. Do we have any questions for Bernhard? Okay, hello. Um, okay, I well understood, of course, the uh, analogy with uh, uh, buying goods on Amazon or whatsoever, but uh, uh, do you have concrete examples of, uh, of recommendations that are, that are made uh, for a search on uh, uh, geodata concepts, for example, because it's not very obvious uh, from, from my opinion. Of course, if you're interested in it, you can look at the NRGU website. There you can find the full implementation of the recommendation system within the NRGU Geo portal. You can interact with that, so okay. feel free to try. Okay, so I go there and I try. Okay, I understand very much um, about uh, the auto-completion or the tax or whatsoever, but uh, in terms of recommendation itself, uh, do you have an example in any way that uh, you can cite about uh, good recommendation after a search uh, for a visualization or whatsoever? Actually, I don't really get the question. <laughs> uh, if you have an example, if uh, I'm looking for, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, some uh, energy information about the region, what, what, kind, what kind of recommendation I could get from the system? I, I, I don't see really... Um, uh, what for example, you could get, if you're interested uh, in solar potential within Austria, you might also be interested into solar potential within Germany. That would be one example. Other questions? I see somebody tr going for the microphone. Thank you. Campanile from Italy. Um, I would like to know, since GeoPortal server is open source and ISI, ISI rec, I think it's open source, is your implementation or customization also available as open source? Uh, currently it is not, but we can have a talk afterwards. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> With pleasure. Do we have time for one final question? Okay. Okay, did you have any, related to this question, did you have any, any literature study or research on how can you, you know, you know uh, uh, recommend something on, on the basis of geospatial data? Did you have some uh, research work on that? Right, like the criteria, on what basis you can have recommendations? You said some languages further, you know, you, you, your last slide. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have some further work on that? Like, you said some things to come at the end of your uh, talk, but <laughs> did you have some work on that or uh, still you, ongoing? You work? mean about the semantic analysis? That's, that's what I meant by stay tuned. Yeah, on what basis you can have recommendations concerning geospatial data? I mean the research, example, research work, I mean. For example, what I, what I can think of is that, for example, you have uh, official notifications within governments mm -hmm. and you can combine that with, some, with the metadata of spatial data which are currently quite often not interrelated. That could be one use case for that. So you haven't started yet in, in that area, I mean, 
in that research area? Do I've you? started within the you, research area, yes. You are starting and you will go on, I guess. I will go on with it. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Okay, Pella, thank you very much. I think 